Today we're going to discuss vaccinating our dogs and what some strategy are around vaccines. Hello, today we are going to the vet. It is that time of year where Jax and Hazel, who are behind me, uh, need to go and get their shots and their blood work and everything like that. So I thought this would be a good opportunity for me to let you know how I advocate for my dogs. But let me get on the road so we're not late for the vet and we'll talk about what it is we should and shouldn't do and where we should get some advice from our vets. And sometimes we need to just do our research. So let's do it. Okay, we're back from the vet and had a great visit. Everybody's doing well at least Jackson Hayes. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit about a controversial topic. Again, you guys know I'm not a vet, but just really try and advocate for these beautiful dogs I have. They're all kind of helping me <laughs> record today. I think I have all of them breeze over there a little bit, but uh, I've got Molly behind me, Hazel, Charlie, and Jax. So they're all here. They're all helping. <laughs> As always, uh, they like to be part of the party. Today, uh, I want to talk about vaccinations and how we're kind of, as a culture, over-vaccinating our dogs in a lot of cases. This is just for your information. This is to get you a little bit of information and allow you to make informed discussions and decisions with your vet. Just wanted to kind of put that out there. I'm not trying to tell you not to vaccinate your dogs. I'm just trying to make sure that you have the information that you need to have those discussions couple of things, as I've mentioned in the past, I try and advocate for these beautiful dogs as much as I can. I groom them because it's less stressful for them. I do their nails because it's less stressful for them. I cook for them because it's better for their health. I give them certain supplements that I've thoroughly researched because it's better for their health. And so I'm trying to keep these rescues who've had a hard, harder life than most as happy and healthy as I can keep them. I do have some notes because there are a lot of vaccines out there. So I'll refer a little bit to uh, my screen a little bit more than I normally do. I used to be just like everyone else. I would let my vet dictate kind of what needed to happen with my pets. And this includes my cat. And many of you maybe don't know, I have a cat as well. Um, my daughter really uh, has a bond with that cat. So it's more of her cat. I, I used to rescue cats. I had 24 cats at one point in my house. I am a cat lover, a dog lover. Anyway, about 10 years ago, I started to see a little bit more research about vaccines and whether or not they were necessary and over vaccinating. And some of the distress vaccines can cost your pets. It could be anything from sight soreness to some serious seizures and long-term effects of these vaccines. And so I started to take notice. I started to do a lot more research, but at that point in time, they really weren't saying don't vaccinate. They were just more saying some of them can have bad effects. And I, at the time, was rescuing mostly lab mixes. And so I had big dogs. I feel like because the vaccines are the same dose for any size animal, I feel like that the big dogs really aren't as, or at least in my case, the big dogs didn't have any negative impacts from vaccines at that point. Fast forward to about eight years ago when we started to rescue these cavaliers, which are a breed that are known for some serious health conditions. So I was doing just a ton of research. What can I do to make sure that these lovely animals uh, live their best lives? And so vaccines kept coming up. I researched the heck out of it, specific mostly to that breed. And that's when I really started to pay attention to these vaccines. As many of you know, I follow Dr. Judy Morgan. She's a holistic vet. So she's a real vet <laughs> with a real practice but she is more on the holistic side. She's very direct. She doesn't mince words at all, and she just puts it out there. And a lot of the stuff she says is controversial, but she also does, she has a ton of Cavaliers. <laughs> so the Cavalier King Charles Spaniels, she has like 10 or 12 of them at any one, one point in time. She has a lot of older ones. She follows these things for her own pets, as well as in her own practice. I have all of her books, I watch all of her videos. I've been to seminars for pet health where she's the main speaker. So I just, I really appreciate a lot of what she does. And I do follow some other holistic vets. I'll be sure to include those in the description box below, and especially information about her because I think she's fantastic. A lot of the vaccine related information I did learn from her and from other holistic vets. And now I've incorporated what I've learned into my pet's health routine. So the first thing I changed many years ago was not allowing my vet to do more than one vaccine at a time. I think this might be more important than almost not vaccinating for the non-core vaccines. A lot of times you walk in, um, and for Jax and Hazel yesterday, I walked in and the vet tech said to me, okay, so today Jax is due for 
um, lepto, Lyme, influenza, Bordetella. And she said, oh, but good news is he doesn't need his rabies today. <laughs> and I was like, oh my goodness. So she is basically saying that she was going to give me those four or five vaccines all at once to this poor dog. I I would never do that. Um, and about six or seven years ago, I put my foot down at the vet and said, one vaccine at a time and three weeks in between. And they had a really hard time with it. So I wasn't doing what everybody else was doing. And they had to figure out how they were going to charge me for it. So they charged me up front for all the vaccines, but allowed me to come in every three weeks to space them out. They charged me a vet tech fee for me to be coming back and forth. But I was willing to pay that because I thought it was that important. And I'll explain in a moment what non-core vaccines are. I'm, I'm just really shocked at, at this stage of the game that that they're still allowing all those vaccines to go into an animal all at once. Especially because if they react to one, which one was it? You know, or all these things that are trying to build up these antibodies. So, you know, parts of the disease itself or the virus itself is then into these poor little bodies. So anyway, I think it's, it's just one of those things that I'm hoping that changes at some point in time. So let's back up a little bit and talk about some of the research that Dr. Judy and some other holistic vets recommend and do with their own pets. First, Research, research has found that puppies, newborn puppies, actually have their mother's immunity for much longer than originally thought. So it was thought like six to eight weeks, and now they're saying it's more like up to about 20 weeks. So the longer you can wait for vaccines for those newborn pups, the better it will be for them. The preference for Dr. Judy and other holistic vets is to wait more like 12 to 16 weeks to start their first vaccines with two to three weeks in between the different types of vaccines. And then the boosters, they're suggesting that you wait three to four weeks instead of the two weeks that's often recommended and wait those three to four weeks for those uh, booster shots. For dogs, especially in the United States, it is required in almost all states, I think except for Hawaii, to have rabies. There are um, what they consider to be core vaccines which is a series more for puppies, which is DAP, D-A-P, and it stands for distemper, adenovirus, and parvo. But after the first year, these holistic vets are suggesting that we titer the dogs to see if they have the antibodies for these diseases or viruses. And that shows their immunity versus the vaccination. The antibodies show that they have an immunity to the disease or the virus versus just showing that they've had vaccine. Titers are blood tests, and there's a cost for them. They're usually around $100, $125 for a titer, but you typically only have to do that once as well because if it shows that the antibodies are in the dogs or cats, then you know that they have um, built up an immunity to the disease or the virus. Again, you're gonna wanna talk to your vet about this. If your dog has a certain health condition or has a lifestyle or environment where you're gonna wanna do more of the DAP or do do something different with these vaccines, then those are the types of things that you need to have a discussion about. And again, I just want you to have a little bit of information and get you curious enough to go out and do your own research and see if maybe vaccines and all of the vaccines at once and those kinds of things are really what's best for your pet. Uh, I talked earlier about non-core vaccines and non-core vaccines are Bordetella, which is kennel cough or the vaccine for kennel cough, Lyme, lepto, and canine influenza. So those are considered non-core. And Dr. Judy doesn't re really recommend that you do any of those non-core, again, unless there is a specific reason. These vaccines are not recommended by her for various reasons. It's either due to the negative impact on your dog or because the vi vaccine is dangerous itself, or in some cases, the vaccine actually infects the dogs or has the potential to infect the dogs with the virus or the disease that it's trying to prevent. And then some vaccines, just like our human vaccines for flu or for COVID, there's different strains. And sometimes the vaccine that the dogs get that year don't fit the strains that are out there, especially for things like influenza. So those are just some things to consider. You're going to need to talk to your vet about that. And you're going to hear me say that throughout this. Now, some things to consider when you're thinking about whether or not you're going to vaccinate your dog for the non-core vaccines is the lifestyle of your dog. Because sometimes places you want to take your dog to are going to require vaccines and some more than others. Boarding facilities, pet daycare centers, RV parks, which we visit a lot, groomers, and even some vets are not going to allow your pet to be there without a laundry list of the vaccines that you need to prove that they've had done. Sometimes you can prove your dog's immunity through titers and some 
companies that are a little bit more up to date with how things are going will allow those titers proof by by the titers the blood tests showing the immunity of the dog but some say nope we need to see the vaccine records so you just need to keep that in mind again it depends on your lifestyle it depends on the health of your dogs and as i mentioned before there is a cost to the titers so it's a blood test there is that cost a lot of people are saying like that they're charging them an extraordinary amount for the titers, like $500 in some cases. But Dr. Judy and us of the other holistic vets say that really the cost is right around like $40 per titer, but you know, add on all their costs and shipping it to wherever they got to ship it. And they're saying around $100, $125 maybe for a titer. It shouldn't be $500. Just check into that with your vet. And if your vet is charging an extraordinary amount, maybe it's time to look for a different vet or at least research what you can do to help your vet maybe get a better process. If you watch some of Dr. Judy's videos, she always talks to the vets as well as to just us pet owners. She's got a lot of suggestions on how you can help your vet if your vet is not willing to, to do the work themselves. Some other things that you need to be aware of is if you ever take your dog out of state or certainly out of the country, there are going to be requirements to show proof of vaccines and a lot of times proof of the titers. So they want proof that you've had the vaccine plus your dog is immune to whatever the disease or virus is. So just keep that in mind. Um, some of the states like New York and New Jersey for sure have stricter requirements on proofs of vaccine. They actually charge fees for people that don't have their rate, their dog's rabies up to date. So as an example for me, when I went in yesterday and she rattled off all the things that Jax was due for, I gently explained again that Jax doesn't get any non-core vaccines. So I said, you know, no abortatella, no Lyme, no influenza, no lepto. They still give me a kind of a look <laughs> and kind of like, oh, she's one of those. Uh, and, and I'm okay with that because these are who I'm responsible for. Uh, I, I'm not, I don't worry about what other people necessarily think of me. I, and I said to her, I said, you know, you guys keep telling me that you're going to take these off of their charts. I, I just don't want anyone to accidentally give them a vaccine because it's showing up in their charts as something that's due. And she said, oh yeah, we take it off. But because you've had it at one point in time, it pops back up in their chart. These guys at some point in time had all of those vaccines either through the rescue that I took them from or in some cases 10 years ago or so when I was allowing the vet to make the decision on what vaccines my dogs had. Again, I'm just hoping that you find this interesting enough and it piques your curiosity so that you want some more information and do your own research. I think it's just so important that we advocate for these animals that God gave us. Let's help them stay happy and healthy. And in some cases that might mean that you need to do the vaccines, but maybe you spread them out more. Maybe you take some of them out, maybe you'll get a better idea of what they're more sensitive to if you spread out those vaccines and see what kind of reactions they're getting, whatever it is. Just um, be able to have that informed discussion with your vet. I just thought since it's that time of year for me where um, the two big dogs go first to the vet and then I take the three big dogs, they go next week to the vet. This is just that time of year where I'm reminded about the vaccines and the crazy looks I get at the vet where they're like, oh, she's one of those. <laughs> So I hope you found this interesting. My my very lazy friends here really enjoyed spending some time with you and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. If you advocate for your dogs in the same way around vaccinations or if you do something different, I'd love to hear about it. Please leave me a comment below. Also, please subscribe to my channel and if you found this content useful, give me a like. Also, if you hit the notification bell, you will get notified every time I put out new content. I typically put out new content twice a week. So I look forward to seeing you. Thanks.